Hey Grove Youth Online, we are so excited that you are here to join us for week two of our mental health series. And we have two guests with us, which is Emmy. Hi, I'm a senior at Woodcrest Christian High School and I'm excited to be here today. Sweet, and Noah? I'm Noah, um, I'm a therapist at the Counseling Center and I also volunteer for the high school. Awesome, and I am Clay and I'm the high school intern. And so um, I'm gonna pray as we jump into week two of our mental health series. So Lord, um, we just give this time to you and we ask that um, our hearts and our, um, and our mind would be aligned with you and with your word and with what you want us to know. So God, I pray that you would just speak to us and speak to our hearts. And I pray that you would speak truth to um, the people who are listening. And if they struggle with mental health or they know someone who struggles with mental health, I pray that this information that we talk about today would be helpful, that it would be encouraging um, and um, we just thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. So, uh, last week, David, Trey, and Olivia talked about kind of an overview of what mental health is and some stigmas, and they answered the question, is it a sin? Um, and so if you have not checked that out, go ahead and check out last week, and that kind of feeds into this week where we are talking about going a little bit deeper into what worry is, what anxiety is, and stuff like that. So we're just going to start it off. Um, I think Emmy has the first question, and we'll jump right into it. Yeah, so my first question is, how do I know if my anxiety is a problem or just normal worry? Yeah, um, so I think I'm, I'll compare the two, and I'll kind of go back and forth for you guys, um, and I'll give some examples as we go along, too. So um, I'll start with worry. Um, worry is um, something that we experience in our heads, right? So these are this, our thoughts that we think about, um, where anxiety, we experience this in our bodies. So um, we experience this through uh, sweating, um, our heart racing, headaches, things like that. Um, worry is more specific. So with worry, we're going to worry about finishing a homework assignment that's due at midnight, right, that we procrastinated for. Um, anxiety is more of general concern. So with this, we feel anxious about the future and the unknown. Um, worry, it triggers problem solving for us. So when we have a problem, we start to come up with solutions. Um, we strategize for those solutions. And then once we um, once we figure it out, the worry's kind of gone. Um, where anxiety, on the other hand, it doesn't trigger problem-solving skills. Um, it, the way I describe it is anxiety is like a roller coaster that you never wanted to get on and you just can't get off of it. Um, worry creates mild emotional symptoms. So the way I think of it is it's more annoying than anything else, but you're able to function throughout the day. Um, where anxiety is more um, severe in its emotional distress. Um, so it's harder to concentrate and things like that. Um, worry is caused more by realistic concerns. So an example of this is if you're concerned about um, what grade you got on a test um, and you know that you didn't study for it, you're gonna be more worried about that. Um, where anxiety is more of the what ifs and imagined type, type stuff. So an example of this I use is uh, FOMO, the fear of missing out. Um, so we see our friends hanging out on social media and then we start to wonder, well, why the heck weren't we invited? What did I do wrong, right? And I just, I'm already starting to spiral um, and trying to figure out well, what the heck, you know? Um, worry is something that's more controllable where anxiety is not. That's where you want to see more professional help. Um, worry can be short-lived. So like I said earlier with the strategies, you kind of come up with your strategies, you get your solution and it's done, where anxiety can last longer. So with that, the topics can change from day to day and even week to week as well. Um, Worry can, it's also a normal psychological state, so we're all gonna experience worry. Um, but once it's resolved, it's kinda gone. Uh, where anxiety, like I said earlier, it's more of a, um, a, an abnormal psychological state where you need to go see more help for that. Um, and then lastly, for both of them, um, worry doesn't impact us um, as much professionally, socially, um, at school, personally, and so on, where anxiety does, like I said earlier, the concentrating, things like that. Interesting. Yeah. So worry is more specific, temporary, whereas anxiety is this more generalized, prolonged type. Yeah, exactly, deal. exactly. So then is that kind of the same as depression and sadness, or do those uh, relate to those things? So with sadness, sadness, it can relate to depression, but they're a little bit different. Um, so sadness is something that we're all going to experience, right? Um, kind of like worry, we all, we're all going to experience that. Um, sadness is a factor of depression. Um, we experience sadness when um, we lose our favorite pet. 
uh, our boyfriend or girlfriend breaks up with us, uh, we lose a loved one, things like that. Um, and the way that we typically get over sadness or work on sadness is by venting about it, talking to someone, things like that. Um, where it starts to become more of a problem is if you notice that your sadness is lasting longer than a couple weeks. That's where it starts to turn into depression. Um, so if you're feeling sad for most of the day, all day, um, like I said, for a couple weeks, that's a sign of depression. Um, you start to lose interest in things that you used to like. So for example, sports. Um, I don't want to go to my sports practices anymore. Um, that's something that you most likely like doing or you wouldn't be in sports, right? Um, you have change in your eating or sleeping habits. So sleeping for long periods of time or not getting any sleep at all. Um, you feel tired, um, kind of going back to that. You have uh, feelings of worthlessness. Um, difficulty concentrating is something else. You have also hopelessness and helplessness, and then there's the suicidal thoughts as well. Yeah. So what would be a long period of time of sleeping? Because <laughs> I do love my sleep. <laughs> I don't know. I would say something like all day. If you're getting up and going to bed, or going to bed and then getting up and like going to get a snack and then going straight back to bed, and then it's just kind of this cycle and you don't, you don't get anything done, then that's more of a sign of depression. Okay. So yeah. If you're experiencing these symptoms, then when do you know that you need to go get help? Yeah. So... One of the biggest things that I look at is um, when you're not able to do your normal daily activities. Um, so this can include you're having difficulty concentrating, like at school or doing homework. Um, again, feelings of, of hopelessness and helplessness. Um, thinking, thinking about death or even wanting to die um, is something where um, you're going to want to go get help for that as well. Um, and again, your eating and sleeping habits, kind of, kind of um, like what I went over depression with. Those are the types of signs. Um, reality testing is another good one. So with reality testing, um, if your thoughts are different than what your peers are experiencing, then that's something that you want to check on, right? Um, thoughts of suicide. So if you're having thoughts of suicide, you need to go get professional help. Um, that's a sign. When your coping skills um, are not working like they used to, um, I'll talk about this a little later too, but social media and TikTok is not a coping skill. Um, it's a way to avoid. Um, noticing that your issues are bigger than yourself um, is another way. Um, when you're stuck in a specific mindset, um, when we trick ourselves into avoiding things and we try to rationalize it. So this is where TikTok comes in. Um, so let's say we get home from school, we have this homework assignment, right? I start doing it and then I get bored in a sense. So I'm going to go on TikTok and TikTok leads into hours of just scrolling through. Um, and on the surface, we kind of see that as like, oh, I just don't want to do my homework. But really, if you dig down deeper, it's we're avoiding feelings that we just don't really want to express right now. Um, and then even from my own personal experience of when um, I realized that I needed to go get my own help, um, this wasn't until early on in college. I just kind of assumed, like, my family, we argued, right? Well, all families argue, but it was to another level. Um, and when I started to notice that the stuff that I, haven't, uh, that I had not dealt with started trickling out into... Uh, my social life, such as like blowing up randomly or being rude, um, that's when I started to notice, oh, maybe there's something more there that I'm just not um, willing to work on or not choosing to work on yet. Um, so yeah, that's kind of when I decided I needed to go. Yeah, I think it's comforting knowing too that even you as a counselor were, was seeking help too. And I think for this next question, um, I felt in the beginning stages of kind of my struggles with anxiety, um, which is, I wanted to get help for it, but I was too embarrassed yeah. and I didn't want people to know, um, kind of like because I was focused on those stigmas we were talking about last week. So um, what would you say to somebody who's too embarrassed to, to um, get help? Yeah, um, I really like this question because like you said, there's that stigma, right? And when there's that stigma, then, well, I don't want to go get help. I don't want people to know that I need help, right? Um, so the way I would answer this is um, I would imagine it would be really embarrassing uh, to not get help and eventually your stuff, right, your, your undealt with stuff starts to trickle out and people start to notice slowly, right? And then it would be even more embarrassing later down the road, let's say like you're in your professional career, or you're married, right? And you still haven't dealt with that stuff. And now it's starting to come out there and more and more people are noticing, right? Um, and you start to become less aware um, that you can't even hide it. You think you're doing such a good job, but really people are noticing it and maybe not realizing that it's a mental illness type issue. Um, and it even goes into, I wonder if it would be, if, if it would be really sad for um, your friends and family to not see you here anymore because you chose never to get help. Um, and I know that went really far, but 
sometimes that's the case. Um, so I see it as it's not embarrassing to go see a counselor, it's more brave. Um, and if you do feel embarrassed, you can take a friend with you, right? You can take them and they can sit in the lobby um, and that could be a good option for you. Um, sometimes it's even um, the parents who are more embarrassed than you are. Um, and there's this, that, there's this fear of, I'm gonna disappoint my parents if I tell them that I'm, I, I have anxiety, I have depression. Um, your, par your parents' feelings though, they're not your own. If you're feeling these things, um, it's a good idea to ask questions and go and see a counselor for that. Yeah. Um, I know not everybody struggles with mental health, but I'm sure we all know people who do. So how do you know when someone else needs to get help? Yeah, so uh, think of your friend group, right? You have your, your core group of friends, and one of them just decides that they're not going to talk to you guys anymore. They're, they're pretty distant with you, um, and they stop talking to you for long periods of, periods of time. That's, that's a sign. Um, when your friends have constant mood swings, um, or they become rude and argumentative during conversations, uh, maybe even defensive and short with you, um, suicidal thoughts as well. So one thing to look out, or a couple things to look out for with, with suicidal thoughts is um, giving important things away um, kind of shows that they're preparing for it. Um, saying their goodbyes to people, so that could be through letters. Um, I've seen people joke about it on social media, um, things like that. Um, expressing that they don't wanna be here anymore is another sign. Um, considering death, having thoughts of death, um, wondering what life would be like without them um, are all signs of it. Um, and then the person has the plans, mean, and intents to do so. Um, they also have constant crying, um, sleeping a lot or not at all. For guys especially, it's uh, playing video games constantly. Um, if you're doing it all day and not getting anything done, you're kind of avoiding. Um, missing multiple days of school is another one. And then uh, lastly, I would say when your friends and family start to cope through drugs and alcohol, and even sex too. It's interesting the correlation between those those things like drugs and it leads to drugs and alcohol yeah. but it's important to remember that video games could also be coping like you were talking about yeah i mean they're fun but gotta yeah. be careful <laughs> yeah um well let's just say so we let's say we've noticed these things in our friends or in a friend and we talk to them and they end up opening up to us about their mental health struggles what what should I do or what should Emmy do? Um, should we tell someone? Yeah, so I think to start off, the best thing to do, they've chosen to open up to you. So um, listen to them, empathize with them. Um, it's not your time to, f to fix them in a sense. They're not asking for you to fix them. Usually they just want you to listen. Um, if, they, if they ask you a question and ask for your opinion, then hey, feel free to. Um, don't turn the conversation on to you. Um, like I said, they've trusted you with this information. Um, so hold on to that and thank them even for sharing because it's not, it's not easy to be vulnerable with someone, especially when it comes to talking about depression and anxiety. Um, if you think that one of your friends, there's something up or there's something different about them, um, feel free to ask them questions. I don't think it would hurt to ask questions. Um, but if you feel like it's, they're, they're not expressing what it really is, then that's when maybe you can go and tell someone. Um, so if you're at school, um, and I know school's a little bit different right now, um, and you're mostly online. You can stay after class and tell a teacher. Uh, wait till you're alone and let them know what's going on. Um, you can contact a school counselor right now, right? That's an option too. Um, or just tell a trusted adult. If you're at church, um, tell David. David's an option. Um, again, you can tell a trusted adult as well. And then if you come in person and you see me on, on campus, feel free to come up to me and I'll, I'll have a conversation with you as well. Um, the suicide hotline is another uh, good option as well. Um, all you have to do is search it up on the internet and the, the number comes up in bold and they're available 24 seven for, for you to talk to if you need help. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, I would even say, um, they may feel negatively towards you if you do tell a trusted adult, but just remember that you could have saved their life and two, you're really doing the best thing for them. Um, you can continue to support there and be there for them and even pray for them as well. Um, so I have a follow-up question um, about what you just said. So are there some things that I should do or shouldn't do when I'm asking my friend um, about their mental health issues? Yeah, so I would start with anti-codependency. Um, so you don't want the hurting person to only come to you. Um, and the reason why is because you aren't a trained professional for this. Um, you also don't want to change your opinion and perspective on them and see them more um, as an annoyance rather than as a hurting person in your friend. Um, 
And you don't also just don't want to take on that therapist role. Uh, you don't want the hurting person to also abuse that power either because if they see, well, they're always going to answer me for this, well, then I'm going to keep going to them. And like I said, you're not a trained professional. Um, you, you aren't the only person um, that can help them. Don't invalidate their feelings. Um, we may have experienced what they're going through a little bit differently than they have, so allow them to feel it that way. Um, don't spread rumors or talk about them. Um, one, it's inappropriate. Two, not, it's not the time to do so. Um, and they trusted you uh, to share that information and to keep that private. Um, where it doesn't necessarily become private anymore is if um, they're a danger to themselves or others. So wanting to hurt themselves, wanting to kill themselves, wanting to hurt somebody else. That's where I would recommend to go and tell somebody. Um, don't take on their hurt for them. Um, you're going to become exhausted and worn out through that. Um, and you aren't helping them now. It's more of you're going to start hurting yourself. Um, I also had a little bit of fun with this question and threw it up on Instagram just to see what other people, um, what other bad information people have gotten um, when they've been vulnerable with someone. And the biggest one that I got was that I need to pray more and that I'm not right with God. Um, this automatically assumes that, okay, I'm going to pray to God and God's going to answer me right away and take away these things. Um, and when he doesn't, then they're going to start to wonder, well, did I pray wrong? Is my relationship uh, not right? Mm -hmm. um, and then eventually it's going to spiral into, well, God doesn't love me. and it, That's not true. Um, so with that, God doesn't promise to um, take away the things that we're dealing with right now just because we don't want to. He also doesn't promise that he's going to take away them ever. Um, God can use our struggles for good, and sometimes we need to, to change our own perspective on this. He has um, he has a plan for us, and eventually it's going to glorify him. Um, God is still near, even when we feel that he isn't near. Um, another another uh, big one that I got from uh, people who answered the question were, um, I'm made to feel bad, and then I'm weak for dealing with mental illness. Um, and the verse that came up was 2 Corinthians 12, verses 9 through 10. And I'm not going to read it, but I'm just going to give you kind of a synopsis about it. But it's this idea of, for when I'm weak, I'm strong. Um, another one is it's a phrase and it, it's a phase and it will pass. Um, you're being hormonal is another that uh, came up. Toxic, toxic positivity is a big one too. Um, right, good vibes all the time. Be happy. Uh, it minimizes what the person is experiencing. Um, another big one was just relax. And this one really irritates me because, well, if I could relax, wouldn't I have just chosen to relax, right? Um, it, it's really annoying. And it, again, it, it, it invalidates them. Um, and then the last one that came up that was really big was when others insist that the solutions that worked for them will also work. Um, not necessarily true, right? So a big counseling thing is like journaling. I personally hate journaling, but maybe somebody likes to journal. Um, so you kind of have to leave that open for them. Interesting. Yeah. So during social distancing and um, there's a lot of times that maybe we won't feel equipped to help um, our friend or to do any of this. So what are some things we can do if we don't feel as equipped as maybe a professional? Yeah, yeah. Uh, something easy is to, to start by praying for them, um, talking to God. Um, continue to be their friend. Don't just abandon them just because they're dealing with something that you don't want to deal with, right? Kind of like what I said earlier about they've chosen to open up to you. Stick with them through it. Um, don't treat them as a project. Um, it's going to make it worse eventually. Um, check in to make sure that they're, they're following through with getting help. Um, it shows that you're still by their side and you're still willing to be with them. Um, and lastly, you're, like I said earlier, you're not the only one that can help them, right? There's, there's a certain standard that you can meet and eventually when it gets too far, then you have to go and talk to a professional about it. Yeah. I think that's huge too, just knowing that your friends are with you in it. Yeah and don't really see you any different. I think that's super important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Emmy, um, do you have any follow-up questions or anything that came up? Um, I did have one question about worry and anxiety, so, and sadness and depression. So if you are having feelings that um, could be described as depressed or anxious, does that mean that you would be diagnosed with anxiety or depression, or is it normal to feel those specific feelings and then have them go away? Yeah, so with like with going back to like anxiety and worry, you have to determine, well, is it more worry or is it anxiety? Because sometimes our thoughts can feel like there's so much that it's blowing up, right? Um, so not necessarily. 
uh, it depends on the severity and, and going through like earlier how I went through depression and, and what you have to experience for that. There's certain things that you do have to meet, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily all the time that you're gonna be diagnosed with that. It's maybe learning how to cope better, or learning how to um, see different perspectives um, and change your thought process and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that those are all my questions. Cool, I have a question. Uh, kind of going back to don't take on their hurt for them. Mm -hmm. um, when we're talking about our friends having these struggles and them coming to us, I feel like we're so close with our friends. How can we feel for them and be there for them and have compassion on them like Jesus tells us to, but mm -hmm. not take that on to us in an unhealthy way? Yeah, uh, be there for them, pray for them. Um, when you start to have that thought of, am I is this too much for me? Send them over to a professional, right? Um, you aren't the only one that can help them, right? And knowing that is really helpful. It takes off that burden that you aren't the only one that can help them. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Thanks, Noah. Well, that's all the questions we have for tonight. So thank you, Emmy, for being here. And thank you, Noah. Yeah, no problem. Um, and like, if you guys do, if anything that came up today uh, resonated with you, we do have a counseling center down the street. Uh, feel free to call us. Uh, the number will be on the screen. We're always there to help you. We do want to help you. Um, and I hope that you do give us a call. Awesome. All right, well, I'm going to pray and uh, we'll get out of here. Father, um, thank you for this time. Um, thank you for um, just Noah and his wisdom. And thank you for your wisdom as you continue to guide us in these things that we struggle with. And um, I pray that Everyone on the other side of this camera would know that it's okay. It's okay if um, these things are happening. It's okay if they're struggling. It's okay. I struggle with it. Um, I know um, Noah mentioned he did too. So I just hope that this is an encouragement, um, an encouragement and um, is very uplifting to everyone who's watching. So we love you a lot, Jesus. Um, and we pray that you would continue to guide us and just help us. Help us in these struggles and help us find you in these struggles. So I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.